Hello, chemistry students, and welcome to a new chapter. This is chapter five, section one, revisiting the atomic model. Um, this week is a little bit lighter. We just are going over this one section this week. I don't have you do a lab this week because we've been over a lot of atomic um, symbols and building an atomic model. So we're gonna take a week off from a lab activity, but you still have your normal um, weekly assignments due. So let's take a look at chapter five, section one, revisiting the atomic model. So Rutherford, Rutherford's model, remember the Rutherford model where, where that protons have a positive charge and neutrons have no charge, a neutral charge, and those are in the nucleus of the atom. Electrons have the negative charge and those are around the nucleus. However, there were some limitations to Rutherford's atomic model. It explained only a few simple properties of the atoms and it could not explain the chemical properties of all the elements. For example, Rutherford's model could not explain why an object would glow dull red, then yellow, and then white when heated to higher and higher temperatures. So we're going to try to address some of those problems. Niels Bohr in 1913, he was a Danish scientist, um, physicist, and student of Rutherford, and he changed Rutherford's model slightly to incorporate newer discoveries about how the energy of an atom changes when an atom absorbs or emits light. So we, we start to see this idea of electrons orbiting the nucleus, but in different levels, and we'll talk about what that means. He proposed that an electron is found only in a specific circular path or orbit around the nucleus. He also related the hydrogen atom's energy states to the electron within the atom. So he stated that electrons move around the nucleus in certain allowed circular orbits that are fixed, definite circular paths where electrons can be pinpointed. This was a really important discovery. Each possible electron orbit in Bohr's model has a fixed energy and the fixed energies an electron can have are called its energy levels. A quantum of energy then is the amount of energy required to move an electron from one energy level to another energy level. That's a quantum of energy. Energy levels in atoms. So the Bohr model states, um, similar to the rungs on this ladder are somewhat like the energy levels in Bohr's model of the atom. A person on the ladder, for example, cannot stand between the rungs. Similarly, the electrons in an atom cannot exist between energy levels. So Bohr is saying that the electrons that are surrounding the nucleus of an atom are in specific energy orbits around that nucleus. The energy levels in atoms are unequally spaced like the rungs in this unusual ladder. Here. And if you can kind of see it down here, the higher the energy levels are closer together. So just like this ladder, and I'll go back to my presentation view, the higher energy electrons are closer together. And the same thing in an atom, the higher energy electron orbits will be closer together. Erwin Schrödinger then was an Austrian physicist and he used new theoretical calculations and, experiment and experimental results to devise and solve a mathematical equation describing the behavior of the electron in a hydrogen atom. The model description of the electrons and atoms was called the quantum mechanical model and it came from a mathematical solutions to the Schrödinger equation. So here's the Schrodinger equation, very kind of complex. We have the Hamiltonian operator multiplied by the wave function will lead to energy. So the quantum mechanical model. Like the Bohr model, the quantum mechanical model proposed by Schrodinger of the atom restricts the energy of electrons to certain values. Unlike the Bohr model, however, the quantum mechanical model does not specify an exact path the electron takes around the nucleus. 
So this quantum mechanical model determines the allowed energies an electron can have and how likely it is to find an electron in various locations around the nucleus of an atom. The probability of this model describes how likely it is to find an electron in a particular location around the nucleus of the atom. And in this model, the probability of finding an electron within a certain volume space surrounding the nucleus can be representative as a fuzzy cloud-like region. And the cloud is more dense where the probability of finding the electron is high. So this leads us to atomic orbitals. Solutions to that Schrodinger equation gives the energies or energy levels an electron can have. And for each energy electron or each energy level, the Schrodinger equation also leads to a mathematical expression called an atomic orbital. An atomic orbital is represented pictorially as a region of space in which there is a high probability of of finding an electron, and we'll go through what this means here. So quantum numbers are energy levels of electrons in the quantum mechanical model, and they're labeled by the principal quantum number, or lowercase n. And these numbers are assigned the values of n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And for each principal energy level greater than 1, there are several orbitals with different shapes and at different energy levels. And these energy levels with where each energy sublevel then corresponds to one or more orbitals of different shapes. And the orbitals describe where an electron is likely to be found. So let's take a look at these atomic orbitals. These orbital shapes are different atomic orbitals. They're denoted by letters. The S orbitals are spherical. The P orbitals are dumbbell shaped as shown by this picture. And for a given principal energy level greater than one, there is one S orbital and three P orbitals. For a given ener principal energy level greater than one, there will be one S orbital, three P orbitals, and five D, e or D orbitals, as shown by this shape. So what we're getting at here is we're looking at the atomic orbitals and the shapes of these orbitals for the electrons that are orbiting around the nucleus of an atom. Four of the five D orbitals have the same shape, but they are in just different orientations in space, the D, X, Y, X, Z, Y, Z, and X squared minus Y squared. The D, Z squared is a totally different shape as you can see before. So this kind of describes the numbers and types of the atomic orbitals depend on the principal energy level. So the, if the principal energy level is one, there's one sublevel, which is one S, and you can have a maximum of two electrons in that sublevel. If we have a G level, we have two sublevels, the two S and the two P sublevels, where there will be one orbit in the two S and three orbits in the two P. And there are two electrons in each one of those orbitals with two second principal energy level. In the third principal energy level, we have three sublevels, three S with one with three orbitals. We have two in each, so that's two, four, six more. So we're at six, seven, eight total so far. And then in the three D sublevel, there's five orbitals. And if there's two electrons in each one of those five orbitals, we're at 10. So for a total, we get 10 electrons here, plus six, plus two, get a total number of 18 electrons. And in the fourth energy level, we have four sublevels, 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. You can see the number of orbitals in each of those sublevels. And then remember, there's, each, there's two electrons in each of those orbitals for a total of 32 electrons in that fourth principle of energy sublevel. The quantum numbers 
are where the principal quantum number always equals the number of sublevels within that principal energy level, as shown in that previous graph. And the number of orbitals in a principal energy level is always equal to n squared. There's always, always a maximum of two electrons that can occupy an orbital. Therefore, the maximum number of electrons that can occupy a principal energy level is given by this formula here, 2 n squared, where n is the energy level. And you can see that all in the previous slides chart. So feel free to maybe watch this video again, and please read through your textbook just to have a good understanding of this topic for this week on electrons, it's because we will build on this idea of electrons in the next two sections.